there, once again welcome to the channel, my name is Santi Louis III, SL3 Simulations and this is it guys, my modification for the engine switch. This is going to be a short video. I won't be going into details on how to open the throttle and also this, this modification requires some soldering skills because you have to remove the original switch and replace it with our new one with the locking mechanism. Links will be provided in the description below as to where to find this switch. Um, so far, you can actually find two types of this. One is a China brand. It looks like this with a rounded cap and the other one is Taiwan. So comparatively, they are almost identical except that the Taiwan brand is a, is a much, has a much higher uh, body. And also it has a it has a sturdier feel compared to the China one with a with a bit of a play. Now compared to the original switch, our new replacement has a slightly a larger diameter of the shaft and that requires us to enlarge the whole of the panel, the enclosure panel, which is this one. So what I did basically is to use a 7 millimeter drill bit or you can use a, a round file to rub against the hole to enlarge it or simply a half moon file as well anything you can use to enlarge the hole this shaft measures 6.5 millimeter so a 7 millimeter hole fits nicely however if you use this type of switch or rather this one the one from china it has actually a 5.2 or 5.3 millimeter shaft so i think the default hole size will just this will just go through there nicely if you notice, these switches comes with a cap, which are actually uh, threaded and uh, removable. Let me show you here a little bit. Here it goes. Now it's actually a good thing because this is where I attach to the new uh, knob design. So I measure the hole exactly to fit this. Push it in and put a bit of Again, my trusty CA glue, just a drop there on the tip and push this right in, which is actually uh, this one. So what that means is that um, I have seen another video of a similar installation and uh, the procedure was quite complicated because, you know, uh, in order to fix this on the switch, the guy needs to create uh, some adapters and drill a hole here, etc., to put it in place. But this one is quite straightforward. Since we have the cap, we have the switch cap, we just have to glue it on the, the new uh, engine knob. And then, after replacing the cover, just screw it in, like so. Oh, and by the way, before you put this in place, make sure that the cap is on the, the most uh, tightened position so that when you screw it in, it ends up on a straight orientation. So I'll show you how it works. So just like that. So what you can do is uh, remove the cap of this switch. And of course, I will provide the STL files for, for this uh, knob. And it is exactly, precisely measured to accommodate this cap. Now, for some reasons, if you cannot find this, uh, I hope you, you do. If you get this, this hole needs to be a little bit bigger, maybe half a millimeter so that this cap is accommodated there. Yeah, yeah, put this one first, make sure it is tight enough like so and then with the cap tightened we have to align the switch straight and then push 
push it in supporting the switch with your other hand yeah I can feel it going there you go but I have to remove it again because I I will apply a small amount of CA glue so that it will remain fixed on this thing so if the next time you need to remove the cover all you need to do is unscrew these handles and then you're good to go Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you compare the old, the original switch and the new switch, this this switch has a slightly higher, uh, longer vertical measurement, which is actually a good thing because I have read somewhere that uh, people who who did this modification have, have some problem, and that problem is the stress point on. The switch and the handle you know with with the new bigger handle and the new feature the force is no longer up and down but also lift up and then flip lift up and flip now without any other support take note that everything attached to the switch and the switch itself is only held by the three pins that you solder on the circuit board which means that it is possible that after some time of applying force upward force you will weaken the the pins and eventually lose the, the contacts and also uh, make make the switch a bit weakly after some time now with this kind of switch which is actually higher than the original that is a good thing because the top of the switch actually hits the ceiling of the enclosure cover which helps the switch stick in place and also you transfer the stress point from the pins onto the the ceiling of the cover so each time you you pull the switch like this the stress point is actually here when it is pushing against the cover so um, the new dimensions of the replacement switch is actually a good thing because of that. So there you see, after we replace the cover, you notice that there is a slight gap between the base and the cover. What that indicates is that the top of this cover is now actually pushing against the top of this switch. Now again, like I said, which is a good thing because it helps transfer the stress from the pins to the, the top of the switch. Right, so with this uh, cap already glued on engine one, let's screw it in. There we go. Now there is a bit of play, as because I think it is expected because this thing is a, there's a mechanical connection. So we can't help but to have a little bit of play but not as much as the other one which actually wiggles a lot 
So to demonstrate how we fix this on, on the other knob, now again, we have to screw this in and make sure it is securely tight such that we can turn it further clockwise. Then we have to attach our engine tool knob here. So with a little bit of CA glue, just nice on top of this knob, like so. And then let's shove this in, making sure that you have the straight alignment, like so, and then push it in. Nice and easy. Alright, so give it a few seconds to cure. Actually, you only have about three seconds window before this kind of see glue hardens. <clears throat> right, so there we go. Our new engine switches. There's a bit of wiggle there. But it keeps the position locked until you lift it and flip it. Now, up until this point, I know I'm pretty sure that some of you might be, you know, noticing that the finish of the switch is actually an eyesore. No, I understand. This isn't the right paint that I was looking for. It's this is at this point this is temporary. I know I'm gonna be looking for the paint that emulates the metallic look, just like the original thing here. This one is made of plastic or uh, some some resin molding or anything like that. So it looks metallic, but it actually is it's paint. So I'm looking for this kind of paint so that I can apply it. So there you go, guys. Um, a small tweak, but adds up a big factor in realism for some of you who are unfamiliar why why do this tweak anyway when the original works just fine now this is a safety feature from the real aircraft I mean if you're a real pilot practicing your approaches in your home simulator or, or just an enthusiast we all want immersion in our home flight simulation and adding this feature actually adds up a bit to the immersion as far as uh, simulating the operation of these switches just like in real life. So uh, links will be in the description. Uh, I'm giving uh, the STL files for free and you guys just have to source the switch out. So guys, if you find the video useful and informative, I would appreciate if you hit that like and subscribe button to help the channel. And stay tuned because my next modification for this DIY series is hopefully to be able to add the same feature on the parking brake, which is to lift this thing and twist, lift again to unlock and then twist. So that's it for now. You guys take care and uh, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.